All right, what's up, trolls and girls? Got a TCAP 22 here, and, you know, this one took me a long time, and it reminded me why I stopped making these. Uh, there will be another one at some point, but it'll be way down the line. The last roughly three weeks, I've only uploaded three videos, and, you know, one of them was just a four-minute video of him lying. And outside of that, the only other video I put real effort into was the uh, Timbo Slice, a.k.a. Chicken Man one. <laughs> and by the way... Where you been, chicken man? It's kind of strange how you just disappear all of a sudden like that. It's very strange indeed, but let's go ahead and stop wasting time because we got a long way to go in this one. As I said in the community post, we're going to cover Major Riot, and I'm not sure how I didn't cover him before, but we're going to write that wrong now. Then we're going to go back to the old school and take a look at a very handsome gentleman by the name of Vidar Viking. But first, we're going to start with the lesser known pay pig. Someone who's been around for a while and they didn't attract that much attention until I saw him pop up recently and I decided to investigate a little further. A hideous gentleman by the name of Guitar Player 1939. Now, to catch a pay pig, part 22, a less a fucking a go. There was a tip that came in overnight last night from Guitar Player 1939. Now, for those who were here for the Christmas Marathon, you remember Guitar Player actually was quite generous with a few tips during the Marathon, and I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you, Guitar Player. He did his $4.20 tip overnight. He says the following. You know, I find it funny. People came to my channel and left comments on my videos, mean comments, because I tipped you. So you know what? Here's some more money just to piss those fucking people off. Well, there you go. I just don't understand the mentality of these people. They're that dumb. That they think that this kind of action will do anything. What you have to understand is, you know, a lot of people are resilient. And at least me, I've always been the kind of person that when I, if I do something, right, or if I'm told, if I'm told I can't do something, all right, but there's no real justifiable reason. Like, for example, if you said, you know, Phil, you shouldn't go walking down the street with an active chainsaw swinging it above your head. And I said, I don't understand. Why can't I do that? And I said, because you can hurt people. Oh, you're right. Okay, that's a good thing. I shouldn't do that. Okay? But when you say, oh, you shouldn't go to a certain content creator stream and support that content creator. And when you ask them why, and they hit you with 700 conspiracy theories that are completely uncorroborated, and it just sounds like a bunch of fucking nut jobs on the internet with tinfoil hats on because that's exactly what it is, because they're losers, and they like to bring down others when they feel like they can get away with it anonymously... Yeah, you tend to say, man, you're fucking stupid, and I can support someone who makes content that I like, and it's none of your fucking business, right? So when Guitar Player supports my streams with some tips during the Christmas Marathon and people go harass him, he has every right to get upset at that and say, what the fuck's your problem? You no-life idiot losers. Get a fucking life. Because if they had a life, the truth is they wouldn't harass people online for supporting content creators. So anyway... Thank you, Guitar Player, for the support during the Christmas Marathon. Thank you for this tip. I'm very sorry that you got harassed. All right, and this is how we start with the subhuman known as Guitar Player 1939. He tips $4.20 overnight, by the way, not even on the fucking stream, and says that because he tipped Phil $70, people went to his channel and left mean comments, so now he's tipping again because of it. You know... This sums up these dumb fucks so good. He thinks he's spiting us by giving this guy more money. When in reality, who's the fucking loser here? Phil's a loser, but he's better than you, guitar player. And it doesn't hurt any of us because we still all have our money in our account. It costs us zero dollars and zero cents to get you to give him even more money. Despite the fact that he probably makes double what you make. But oh no, you're really fucking sticking it to us. Do you see how ridiculous this whole thing is and why people laugh at you dumbass pay pigs? We're laughing at you. Phil's getting over on you. And you're the ones that are at the bottom of the pile here. How can you not see this? But because a couple of people went and left mean comments on your channel, you give him more money. And I never intended to cover this guy. And when I made the community post announcing who I was going to cover, I saw a few comments saying, who's this guy or why are you covering him? And now you know exactly why. You know, I, I don't know how he slipped under the radar of this series for so long, but you're getting your 15 minutes in the spotlight, and I'm going to enjoy roasting your fucking ass.
And quite frankly, you deserve it for doing dumb shit like this. All right, and as you can see here, this is an old school pay pig. He goes back a long way. Uh, the first time I found him in Pig Pig Go was in November of 2015. He was a patron, probably a $50 patron. And he got his questions in on Ask the King. Now, we're not going to listen to these, but, you know, I just wanted to show you this is old school. This is how far back he goes. And, you know, just the other day, he gave him 70 bucks and then some. So infatuation, obsession, dumbass, whatever you want to call him. Next a clip. Well, first off. Thank you to Guitar Player 1939 who actually tipped me five dollars before I even started the stream. And you know, he asked a pertinent question. I've been getting questions about this recently, so I think this is a good question to answer here on pre-stream. He says, "Will you be reviewing Destiny 2?" Ladies and gentlemen, things have changed. All right. Some will say for the better. Some would say for the worse. I guess it depends on your own subjective view. Um, now there may come a day when I make so much you know, uh, from the streams that I don't even have to worry about YouTube anymore. Like the YouTube income will be negligible, right? If, even when that day comes, then maybe I'll have a little bit more freedom to say, okay, well, one day I will take away from streaming to do these reviews or whatever, because I don't need to worry about, oh, I didn't make money today. Sadly, I'm nowhere near that. I'm at a point where every day matters to me, folks. Every single day I'm clawing and scraping to basically, you know, pay the bills. And I need to keep at it. I need to keep plugging away. I need to be here every day on stream for you guys uh, to keep this moving or else I'm not going to be continuing to be successful. All right. <clears throat> Fair enough. All right. There's your answer. I hope the guitar player feels that that was a good enough answer for his $5 tip. Um... <laughs> Sir James D. Tech just said, seems like YouTube is dedicated to becoming the next MySpace. I think they are. I don't know how much who could screw up your goddamn business and not listen to your feedback of the people who provide the content that makes you the money in the first place and expect that you're still going to be successful. I mean, it's asinine. The upper management of YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, is brain-dead idiots. All right? They're so worried about SJW issues and fucking shit like that. They're so worried about that that they don't actually run a business that works or makes sense. Well, I'm sure that's how you're really successful in the modern business era, right? To have your head so firmly shoved up your fucking ass that you can't do anything right and you completely ignore all the feedback you get from everyone who tells you you're doing it wrong. I just don't get it anymore, folks. I don't. All right, so the subhuman tips his master $5 again before the stream even started. Really burning question that he can't wait to get answered. And his question was, is Phil going to review Destiny 2? Now, I cut out a bunch there because Phil rambled on for five minutes and made a bunch of excuses as to why he can't do reviews anymore. And what a shock. They all boil down to money. I mean, this shocks me. But during his bitch fest, DSP shits all over YouTube. And it's always very Shawn Michaels when we hear these clips. And then look at him now. And by the way, I can't wait till he loses that YouTube partnership. And it's a coming, trust me. It's only a matter of time. YouTube is starting to cut bait with a lot of people and Phil ain't gonna last and it's gonna be hilarious seeing him scurry back to Twitch after he trashed them just like he trashed YouTube in this clip but during the clip he says that there may be a day where he makes so much from the streams that he won't have to worry about YouTube but today is not that day he's quote clawing and scraping unquote every single day just to get by and pay the bills he also says he needs to keep plugging away and be there every day for you guys, a uh, blah, blah, blah. Phil, you're making considerably more money now than you were then, and it's not even close. You got a bankruptcy that wiped away a bunch of your terrible debt, and you're literally still singing the same song every day. I mean, you just said recently that you couldn't take an extra day off to spend with your wife because you need the money for bills. It's almost like you got some kind of secret addiction there, buddy. I wonder what it could be. Very nice. AES 0411 to the 10-bit series says, if God forbid you won't be able to pay the taxes, when would you begin the procedure of selling the house? Uh, probably February, right? If I can't pay these taxes at the end of January, if I can't afford all this that's going on, uh, I'm already going to be in default. And so I'll probably just have to tell the guy, listen, you know, I'm in default. I'm going to be in default. There's no way I can pay the taxes. I got to sell my house. 
So you got to wait. And then I'll probably, you know, start calling real estate agents. <laughs> what else can you do, right? AES0411. Excuse me. I already gave you a shout out. <laughs> Oops. Um, Nolbert87 did a 10-bit cheer. He said, roses are red, violets are blue, trolls are ugly, and they have small dicks too. King of Hip <laughs> Very nice. King of Hypocrisy did a 10-bit cheer. says, any chance you could sing some songs? No. Brock Lesnar did another 10-bit cheer. He says, is this a charity stream? No. I think he was joking. Haseo X4 did a 10-bit cheer. He said, every little bit helps, so keep it up. That's correct. Thank you very much. Guitar Player also did a $5 tip. That's the biggest tip we did today, so it looks like Guitar Player will probably be starting off, you'll see on the leaderboard that I'm going to have here going. He'll be the top cheerer for the day, or the top tipper for the day so far. He says, keep up the good work. Don't let the trolls keep you down. Thank you, Guitar Player. Troll McTrollface tipped me a dollar. I said, I want you to stop making videos, so I'm going to endlessly keep throwing money at you to stop, to motivate you to stop. <laughs> I know. That seems to be the mentality of the trolls. Figure that one out. B2Gamer321 did a 10-bit cheer. He says, there's always going to be another mountain, and you're always going to want to make it move. That's right. Thank you, Miley Cyrus. Gucci the Jacuzzi did a 50-bit cheer. He says, Phil, what's wrong with SJWs? Don't you like the new Star Wars films where every antagonist is a white male and protagonists are all either black dudes or females? Okay, then. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> I love it. This is your fan base, Phil. Some guy named Nobert does a rhyme and says, Trolls have small dicks. <laughs> Coming from a subhuman in DSP's chat named Nobert. I mean, that's rich. King of Hypocrisy cheers and asks him if he can sing some songs. He says no. Brock Lesnar <laughs> cheers and asks if it's a charity stream. He says no. This hideous freak known as Haseo X4 does a 10-bit cheer and says every little bit helps. 10 fucking cents. Some other moron cheers and says that there's always going to be some mountain in your way, Phil, that you have to get over. And if you only knew then what you know now, little buddy, it's never going to change. But back to the beginning of it. Someone tips and asks him that, quote, if God forbid he won't be able to pay the taxes when would he begin the process of selling the house, unquote? And if you go back and listen to that answer, it's clear this guy has no idea what he's talking about. He's stumbling all over himself, talking about his tax guy, real estate people, mortgage companies, etc. He's literally just naming shit off as he goes along to see what sticks. And how did that selling your house process end up working out for you there, uh, David? Guitar player did a $2 tip. And he says, I actually ordered that mug a couple days ago. Okay. If you don't have no idea what he's talking about, earlier today he tipped me and said that he had ordered a mug. And I was like, oh crap, I checked it. I don't see the mug on my, my, my sales results. Does that mean my sales are fucked up or something? But now he's confirming he ordered a few days ago. And I did see when he did order a few days ago. So thank you very much, guitar player. You guys can check out my merch at any time. Uh, Teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash uh, DSP. DSP Gaming, excuse me. DSP Gaming. Let me give you a plug to the wrong fucking store. <laughs> I'm sure that's not very productive. I'll give you a, a link to the wrong fucking store. Yes, DSP. Plug someone else's merch store, you fucking idiot. Why don't you plug mine? So, Guitar Player tips and says that he ordered DSP's mug a few days ago. And that it's actually shipping now. And of course, DSP was paranoid because as soon as he didn't see the money go through the same day as the order, he immediately thought the website wasn't working anymore. Or that something had gone horribly wrong. He's so fucking paranoid, man. PayPal goes down for an hour and it's the end of the world. Streamlabs has technical difficulties. It's the end of the world. Twitch slash YouTube sub feature is temporarily unavailable. And it's black shirt panic mode. Now, I can't imagine living like this guy. But that's how long Guitar Player has been a submissive to DSP. He's been ordering mugs and shirts from this guy for years. He still shows up and tips $70 from time to time. Everything that's come out about DSP and these fucking idiots like Timbo are just so addicted. It's pathetic, man. Guitar player, 1939, what's going on, man? Did a 95-bit series. I just finished watching your VR chat videos. I don't know how you're, how you're here then. Because, I mean, <laughs> they're pretty much mind-numbing. Like, you watch, you're like, what the fuck is this shit? Why does this exist? How does it exist? It's like a fucking oddity. Of video games. So I'm very surprised you're still alive after watching them. 
So guitar player cheers and tells DSP that he just finished watching his VR chat videos. And DSP tells him that he's surprised that guitar player is still alive after watching those videos. Well, gee, Phil, maybe he should have just threatened to bitch slap guitar player around just like he did to that little 11-year-old girl. Maybe that'll straighten guitar player's bitch ass out. I highly doubt it, but it's worth a chance. And if you're too pussy to do it, which you are, by the way, let me know and we'll get the little 11 year old girl in here and she can handle business. Cause she's probably about 13 or 14 now. And I heard she's looking for some payback, a D S a re. Guitar player took me $2. says, why do stupid trolls have to keep making life difficult for me? You tell me what did I do recently that had anything to do with them? Nothing. Zero. Zilch. I had nothing to do with anything. But for them, this is what they do. Everything's been good recently, you know? Alright, so this moron tips $2 and says, Why do stupid trolls have to keep making life difficult for DSP? Well, first off, your fucking $2 tip is what's making him miserable in that moment. That's not even enough for a one-star bronze, a Brooklyn, a brawler. But then DSP feigns confusion and says he hasn't does, done anything recently, so he doesn't know why trolls keep messing with him. How about those recent Skyrim streams where he's telling people, Oh, I thought you guys really liked this hat, and I really wanted to wear it for you guys, but it just sucks that I can't wear it, and I really need the help right now. There, motherfucker. There's your fucking answer right there. That's part of the reason why I don't like you. Because you lie, you feign distress, and you act like you're not a beggar. Any other questions I can help you out with, you stupid idiot? Uh, first of all, shout out to Guitar Player 1939, who overnight, when I was not even streaming, tipped me $2 and said, the trolls hate you, but they keep giving you money. It's true. It actually is true. They claim they hate me, yet every day, sometimes I'll get cheer negative cheers, tips with negative messages, and it's like, I'm not reading that. So, whatever. I don't know. But anyway... Thank you, guitar player, for the $2 tip. I appreciate that. <clears throat> quote, the trolls hate you, but they keep giving you money, unquote. That was an overnight $2 tip. You're not even on the fucking stream, and you're giving him money. Who's the dumbass here? Here's $2 to get my question answered, and I'm not even on the stream. That's like stopping at 7-Eleven in the morning before you're going to work and saying, oh, I don't want coffee or anything, but here's $2. And by the way, the last person before me that just bought coffee, he's stupid. You can't help these dumb fucking people, man. All right. So Guitar Player 1939 reset for the 11th month in a row. Thank you, Guitar Player. And DJ Runo Chudy said, after years of having the modern channel layout of YouTube, do you still think the old channel format was better? I remember you thinking it was garbage back then. Um, the, the old channel layout was much better. You could customize it with, with backgrounds and stuff. You can do all kinds of fun stuff, man. It was way better than this. The modern one is complete garbage. It's just, it looks like a blank textbook page. Incredibly boring. All right, so guitar player resubs for the 11th month in a row. But then we get an appearance from our good friend, DJ Runo. And hey, pal, haven't heard from you in a while. Good to see ya. And the only reason I included this message is because DJ Runo actually came to the video I put up about him the assassination of DJ Runo, and shared some good news. And let's go ahead and take a look at that message uh, now. So he said, Oh man, I almost forgot that this happened. How fucking stupid and blind was I back then, or I was back then. Thanks to everyone who attended my funeral, and to Super Crazy for not being too harsh on me, although I would have understood if you were. And, you know, I looked up the account. It's a... Uh, you know, I believe in from 2010. It's, it's the legit account. If you want to see the comment, because he left a reply, a very long reply, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. But if you want to see it, go to the assassination of DJ Runo, and I pin the comment. Check out the reply he left. You know, it's just good to see stuff like that, and good for some of these people to wake up the way that they have. A guitar player. 1939 has tipped me $5 because I hate being sick. I do too, sir. Uh, you know, being sick sucks, especially when there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and I hear ya. I'm sure a lot of people around this time of year do get sick because of the change of weather and the like. And of course, you know, kids are, oh my God, what is keyboard? 
<laughs> duplicated the R. Uh, you know, you got kids going back to school. You've got uh, people going back to work. You got all this stuff, all these people now, you know, interacting with more people than before. And it does cause, you know, sadly, a big upturn in sickness, the flu, etc. Flu season, right? So, it is what it is, but um, hopefully you get better soon. I wish you the best and hope you get well soon. You'll all right, so this stupid idiot tips $5 and says, I hate being sick. Well, thank you for that breaking news message that you needed to share with all of us. Nobody else could have figured that one out by themselves. And I can't even blame DSP here. I mean, what is he supposed to say? Oh, I love being sick. But then he adds that, quote, you know, you've got kids going back to school. You've got people going back to work, unquote. His view of reality is so fucked up. He's been stuck inside that condo for so long with no human interaction outside of his cheating soulmate. And she's 100% cheating on him, by the way. He thinks that people just go back to work whenever they want. To quote the great Michael Jordan, DSP, stop it. Get some help, idiot. And demand. Guitar player 1939 tipped me $5 overnight and says, I'm thinking about visiting Seattle. What are some of the tourist attractions that you would recommend there? Okay, great question and good person to ask because I've been to Seattle many times since I've lived here and I have a good idea. So first off, the more common touristy stuff is actually within just a couple blocks. Um, you've obviously got the Space Needle that you can go up and get an amazing view of Seattle area. Um, there's also, right near there, the Pop Culture Museum that has all kinds of stuff. It's like music, comic books, television, movies, and they have rotating exhibits that are very fun. It's actually one of my favorite places in downtown Seattle. Um, there's also the Pacific Science Center. If you're into science and nature, it's a really cool place. They usually, again, have rotating exhibits, but they actually have a dinosaur exhibit. They have a, an insect exhibit with a, a butterfly room where you can go in and have all these crazy uh, butterflies fly around you. Uh, plus all kinds of other various things. You have to look it up because it's, they always have different stuff there. And they have a nice IMA IMAX movie theater. Okay. Um, that you can check out and watch a lot of uh, you know, movies and, and movies and also nature videos in there, okay? Um, also in that area, there's a lot of shopping, there's some restaurants and the like. Um, my other favorite part of Seattle is actually the waterfront. If you go down to the waterfront, which by the way, is only about a couple blocks away from everything I just mentioned, you have Pike Place Market, which is an outdoor market that is like 10 floors of just shops. And don't think, oh, it's like stores you know, right? No, these are all locally owned businesses, people who handcraft products. We're talking textiles, like, you know, clothing, but also handmade little knickknacks, soap, um, scented candles, collectibles, um, all kinds of stuff. There's actually a really cool comic book store in there that I really enjoy going to. Um, and then if you follow Pike Place Market down to the waterfront, because it's actually on the side of this big cliff, on the waterfront, there's an amazing aquarium. There's a ton of seafood restaurants and there's ferries that you can take out and take a ferry ride around that harbor and get a great view. And there's a really awesome giant Ferris wheel. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff just in that area. And that's just one area. Other things to do in Seattle, there's a really cool zoo, but that's more in, in a, a northern part of Seattle. So you have to do a little bit of a drive to get to it. And in downtown Seattle, there's actually a lot of good shopping and there's actually a tram also known as a monorail, that goes from the Space Needle area into the shopping centers in downtown Seattle. And it's only like a couple bucks to take this tram. So you could potentially go there, do all the stuff around the Space Needle, take the tram to the shopping, get food and eat, and then come back and then, you know, and have a whole day of it. It's a really fun thing. So he tips $5 and asks, what are the tourist attractions to visit in Seattle? DSP says he's a good person to ask because he lives near Seattle. He rambles on and names a bunch of shit. And I don't know, Phil. It sounds pretty expensive. How were you able to visit all these places, especially when you were crying poor the last five years? I mean, you've literally been asking for help monthly for years in a row. I'm just not sure how you would have detailed information for all this stuff. It's almost like you've been lying for a long time now and blowing your money on a bunch of wasteful shit. 
then declaring bankruptcy and saying you spent it all on bills, despite somehow being behind on all your bills and credit cards, which is what led you to declare bankruptcy in the first place. Sounds pretty strange to me, my good friend. Oh wait, I'm sorry, that's just a conspiracy theory and I'm moving the goalposts again. Gosh darn it. Guitar player took me $5 and is wondering are people so stupid as to actually try to break into my house when I'm on vacation? Uh, the answer is, I don't think anyone's that stupid. However, they are stupid enough to publicly discuss it on a public forum. Which literally gives evidence to criminal investigators if anything were to happen, that would be the first place they would investigate. So, right. I don't, I don't think those people are very smart. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> like, they think it's, oh, this is funny, it's the internet. We can just say whatever we want on the internet with no repercussions. Like, no, actually, you can't. You just left a public record of you uh, having what's called premeditation. So if anything were to happen, you'll be the first person to be interrogated. <laughs> so good job with that. <clears throat> he sounds like such a child there. Like when you were in elementary school and some kid would say, Oh, you can't beat me up because the police will come get you. No, fuck off and get beat up. Quote, you're going to be the first person to get interrogated, unquote. Have you ever had anything stolen from you? Have interrogators wasted their time on petty theft or robbery? I'm pretty sure they got better shit to do than trying to track down someone on Kiwi Farts. To question them if they had anything to do with the break-in at Darkside Phil's house. Again, he has no sense of reality. You know, my truck got broken into one time at the movie theaters. And these motherfuckers stole my uh, custom-made box in the back with two 12s in it and my amp on it. And, you know, there's police officer there at the movie theaters. And I, you know, I told him about it. Like, he gave me some little fucking ticket. Essentially, it's my receipt for the insurance company to say, here, this was stolen. And I did file something. And I never heard anything again after that. So, DSP, I'm pretty sure interrogators wouldn't to give two fucks about you and your garbage inside your house. Fuck off. What a stupid shit. Uh, guitar player, 1939, has tipped me five bucks. He says, I don't know about you. But I really hate it when people block traffic just to get a front row parking spot. Um, oh yeah, uh, trust me, I see you all the time. People who think that they're the most important thing on the planet, they're God's gift to, to humanity, and so everyone must wait for them, or you know, everyone must be pushed aside because this person thinks that they're important enough to hold up traffic because they want this one fucking parking spot. So I hear you. Okay. Um, sounds good to me. Tip to me a dollar. It says, hey, Phil, congratulations on the wedding. Do you think you'll be able to play royalty-free music during streams to enhance it? it? doesn't have to be loud. It's relaxing. One of my favorites of art, escapism. The Water Embers. Never heard of that one. Uh, the answer is no. I'm fine with just playing my own music. Um, if ever, I, for some reason, I wasn't able to play the remixes, I'd go back to probably, like, PS4 relaxing dashboard music. I have no desire to play royalty-free music and anything that would go with it because it's just going to be more complication. So. Okay, um... Let's see here. Oh, man, my screen just scrolled. Oh, there we go. Timbo Slice Cheers. Just want to say congrats. Hope you two have an amazing, healthy life together. Don't understand people. If the person I hated most in the world had an amazing life event like a wedding day, I would at least stay positive. They don't understand uh, hate on personal life events. Yeah, like I said, you know, okay, you don't like me. Got it. You think I'm a scammer. Got it. You think I'm a scumbag. Got it. You think I'm the worst gamer on the planet. Got it. All right. On the wedding post? <laughs> on the wedding post. The post announcing our marriage to the world. You gotta put that shit. Like, does that not show how fucked up you are? Even if you you hate my guts and you believe all these negative, ridiculous conspiracy theories about me. The wedding post is not the place to put that shit. You see what I mean? <laughs> Swaggins tip me a dollar. I don't really know if, it, if it's actually Swaggins or not. Hey, Timbo, where you been, buddy? Long time no see. And this is why I felt bad at first about making that video about Chicken Man, but then I said, fuck it, and it's for reasons like this. In that Kiwi Farms post, he said how Phil is becoming shady and doing dirty stuff, and he doesn't really like it, and that's why he wants to get away. But in Phil's stream, oh, here's money, and I can't understand how people can hate on you on your wedding day, and you mean the wedding that he fucking lied about and claimed that his parents were dying and that's why he had to go out there? 
despite being in a tax crisis and holding fundraisers for himself? Gee, Timbo, I wonder why people shit on you and say the things that they do. Let's go back to the beginning of it. Guitar player tips and says he really hates it when people block parking just to get a front row parking spot. Again, just like the I hate being sick. Thanks for telling us this. Nobody else can figure that out by themselves. And the rest of us love that. But DSP says that he sees that all the time. People thinking that they're the most important person on earth and that there's God's gift to humanity. And so everyone must wait on them because they're so important. Well, isn't that fucking Shawn Michaels? That you of all people would say something like that. Someone then asked him if he would be willing to play royalty free music instead of that trash he plays during the pre-stream. And he says no, because it's just going to cause more complications. Man, how? This guy is so fucking greedy and lazy. It's royalty free, dumbass. You're even giving some exposure to people that might need it. People that are just trying to break through, but now he needs to hear his dumb fucking voice all over these shitty ass remix songs. And by the way, it's not like he paid those people to make those songs for him. So it's not like it's a business expense. Fucking scumbag. So I received another dollar tip this time from guitar player 1939 who said, Trolls kind of remind me of a Hydra. You cut off one head and two more take its place. I mean... Yeah, and that's why I don't really bother with the shit. You know, every once in a while, you got to get rid of a troll from stream chat. Every once in a while, I got to address something that's really nasty or something from behind the scenes. But for the most part, I don't let it get to me. Instead, I just kind of, you know, progress on and don't really bother, you know, going on about it. You know, there's people trolling right now. I'm ignoring and just going to have a good night tonight, you know. It was actually funny because earlier on the pre-stream, someone said, Oh, Phil. If you could really shut down all those channels of people who, who steal your content and hate on you on YouTube. Because another, another streamer that I know does that. And I'm like, what's the point? It doesn't even matter. Because once one's gone, the next one... You're absolutely right. The next one comes up. Or that just motivates the next one to come up and say, Ah, oh, I'll take the place of that one. You know what I mean? So, there's no point anywhere. Yeah, it, the funny thing is... The fact that I really don't care anymore about that shit... You know, there used to be videos, I mean, we're talking, you know, four or five years ago. This is how you don't play videos. They were getting hundreds of thousands of views or more, okay? Now they don't get that many at all, not even close. The, these videos that people make to make fun of me in the modern era make nothing compared to back in the day when people used to try to shit on me and everything. Not even fucking close. And it's because I don't care anymore. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bring it up and give attention to that shit, and therefore... Those people who want to pay attention to the trolls or whatever, they go ahead and, you know, just don't bother. Don't, don't involve we with it. You know what I mean? I don't know, Phil. I seem to be doing just fine, buddy. Piece of Peace seems to be doing just fine. And Leet is doing great. Anytime he restreams you, he gets way more viewers than you. And praise be, Tevin is clearly doing better than you right now. Actually partnered on the site that despite all the shit that you talk, you wish you were still on. And I know that because look how much you're crying about gifted memberships. Without those, you know how small your actual fan base really is. So you have to pretend you get support from all these new accounts that no one's ever heard of. When in reality, it's two people specifically. And one I've already called out recently and the other, I don't even make videos about them anymore. So you keep begging every day, Phil, because the rest of us are doing just fine because of it. So in reality, thank you very much for being one of the worst people on the Internet. My very, very good friend. And that's how we wrap up with that piece of shit guitar player. Now let's shoot over to, uh oh, Major Riot. <laughs> Major Riot? He's asking about shooting animals in the face. I don't want to shoot any animal in the face. That's horrible. Don't fucking ask those kind of questions, man. All right, and that's how we start with Major Riot. He cheers and asks, what do you think would be funner to shoot in the face? A hyena or a mountain goat? Now, when I originally planned to cover Major Riot, I didn't realize how much of a troll he was actually being. Yeah, he had the Chef Boyardee bit. But as we go along, you'll see how much he was trying to get away with. And of course, we're going to cover the ending, which was extremely fucked up. But Major Riot, you're on deck. 
Major Riot just did 100 minutes. Would you would you be scared if you were sued by your former psychics and their lawyer is Doctor Nightmare? I don't have any former psychics. I don't know who the hell Doctor Nightmare is. <laughs> There'd literally be nothing to sue me over. First of all, anything that I did with those guys is way too far in the past for them to sue me for. That's number one. Number two, uh, you know, there were never any any contracts or anything that we had in place for any of the stuff we did together. So they don't have anything to stand, a leg to stand on. If they, I mean, what would they sue me for, honestly? I have no clue. All I think it was, like, money. Like, you know, I guess people say that Howard's bitter that he never, like, made any money or something. I don't know. He was barely in any of my content. I don't know why he thought he was going to get paid to be in my content. It was John, who was driving ridiculous distances and really, you know, treating it like a job. The once a week that we did co-op, and I paid him handsomely for all of his stuff, so I couldn't imagine why anyone would ever try to sue me for anything. I certainly didn't sexually harass those guys or anything like that. All right, and I don't know who Dr. Nightmare is either, so I don't know if this was an actual question based on some cartoon or anime or whatever, or if he was specifically referring to Howard and Rambo, but Phil immediately took it as a threat and started to defend himself. He says there would be nothing to sue him over and that it was way too long ago. He then says, well, maybe it could be over money, I guess and that he hears that Howard is bitter. Gee, Philip, I wonder what would ever give you the impression that Howard may be bitter over it. Maybe it's the fact that he roasted your sorry ass on a podcast and told the truth about you. But it sounds like you're the bitter one, to be honest. He then says that he paid John handsomely. This dude was driving around in a BMW and ended up moving across the country, but according to him, he paid John handsomely. You still made money off of them after you left them behind because you never pulled down the old videos with them in it. So you still collect ad revenue on it till this day. But you paid Rambo handsomely. Get the fuck up out of here. Do you see why the only people that like this guy have serious issues? And why no normal person would ever consider even giving him the time of day? So fucked up, man. Major Riot did 100 bitch here, said, Would you like to star in the next Ghostbusters movie as an extra gross and slimy ghost? Sure, why not? One that burps as loud as Slimer. There you go. Derek says, Is Jasper hanging out in Cat's room and with Howard the Fireworks tonight and the other night? No, right now Jasper's downstairs with Cat in the living room, relaxing on the couch with him. And the fireworks were fun. We watched the end of the fireworks on uh, Animal Crossing. Although, admittedly, they were exactly the same as last week, so we probably won't even care about it next week. It's kind of the same thing every week. <laughs> so Major Riot cheers and asks him if he would like to star in the next Ghostbusters film as an, as an extra for a disgusting, slimy ghost. Well, you wouldn't even have to apply for that job, Phil. You could just walk on the set and get that bitch. No makeup or special effects needed either. It sounds like a pretty good gig, to be honest. But then Derek asks if Jasper is hanging out with Cat and how were the fireworks? So you would think Phil took his wife out to see 4th of July or New Year's fireworks or something like that. And what are these two idiots talking about? The fireworks on Animal Crossing. And Phil says, yeah, he and his wife enjoyed them. I can't even begin to describe how this picture is all the way around. You have Derek who, I'm not even gonna say anything, man. But then you have Phil and his part-time soulmate wife cozying up on the couch together with a nice glass of a total of fucking a wine and watching the beautiful fireworks on Animal Crossing. You little devil, Phil. I don't know how you pull it off, man. I couldn't even dream up a more romantic scenario than what you and your roommate apparently shared. It's a beautiful chef kiss. Ah. Major Riot did a hundred bit cheer, so why do homeless people constantly ask you for sandwiches? They don't. Why do you think homeless people constantly ask me for sandwiches? That doesn't happen. In fact, I'll say this. The one time ever that I was asked for food by someone, I got them. One time I was in a drive through of fast food, and there was a guy who asked me if I could buy him a burrito. I said yes, and I bought them a burrito and gave it to him. Outside of that, I've never been asked for food ever by anyone. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I'm pressing X to doubt that bullshit. Some homeless person asked Phil for food while he was in the drive through and Dave bought him a burrito. How much you want to bet he said okay, bought an extra burrito, and as Sean was standing there next to the drive-thru window waiting for his food, 
DSP took the burrito out, looked the guy right in the eyes, took a bite out of it and stepped on the gas pedal and got the fuck up out of there. Probably acking his way home too. This guy's an asshole. I don't think he would do a nice thing for anybody ever. And I can say that because when his bank history leaked, did you see one decent thing on there? For a guy that spends as much money as he does, you would think you would see a wildlife donation or a pet shelter donation, some kind of charity write-off, etc., etc. But no, it's literally all bills, food, liquor, and mobile games. Fucking disgusting. Major Riot Chaser, would you ever think about joining other streamers that hang out in a hole in the ground outside of a 7-Eleven to pay good? No, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Stupid. That's really stupid. <clears throat> okay. So Major Riot does a hundred bitch here and says, Would you ever think about joining other streamers that hang out in a hole in the ground outside a 7-Eleven if it paid good? Again, what the fuck? <laughs> What is this guy thinking, man? This is why I said he was just a troll and not some legit fan that was heartbroken about getting banned and not being able to support Phil anymore. He was asking him weirdo questions like this constantly. And it's almost Lysa for Soul-ish. And that fucking pisses me off. Next one's a clip, a less a go. And us, Major Riot cheered and said, would you ever host a, tele a telethon that would help abandon Rottweilers? What? Would I host a telethon to help someone? Nonprofit? Yes. Would it be for abandoned Rottweilers? I have no idea. Oh my god, man. Quote, would you ever host a telethon to help abandon Rottweilers? Unquote. Again, just fucking with him, but Phil's answer, quote, would I ever host a telethon to help someone? Nonprofit? Yes. Unquote. Then why haven't you, bitch? Why don't you help anyone? Why don't you pay people that help you? And not to get off topic here, but shout out to Kid Flim, who gave Phil one of those troll intros recently, and he's working on something specific for me so we can have an intro for some of the videos going forward. And do you know what, Phil? I immediately offered to pay this guy something because that's what you're supposed to do. Not just take advantage of people's generosity. You're such a scumbag, man. You make so much money and people offer to help you all the time and you don't compensate them. You don't return the favor. You don't pay it forward. You deserve this life, man. You fucking deserve it. Kate just cheered and said, but Phil, I don't have a vest. Well, you're, you gotta go get one right now. You owe me vest time. How dare you? I've been wearing extra vests, extra vest time this whole couple of weeks, actually, these past couple of weeks. Every night I've been going overtime and wearing the vest extra for you guys. You can't put on a vest for me. You know, this is, I, I don't, I'm not appreciating this lack of reciprocation, okay? Major Riot Chiefs, this is the last cheer you're ever going to get from me. I'm never cheering again. Well, Major Riot, I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, I enjoyed your Chef Boyardee antics. Oh, the McLeod cheering, so the color of that shirt really brings out the pasty color of your skin. I, that was my intention. I wanted you to see how impressively pale I was. Yes, Phil. The color of that shirt really brings out your pasty skin. You fucking ghoul. Look at this guy. That's a healthy looking young man right there. But Major Riot cheered and said, this is the last cheer you're ever gonna get from me. And this was a while before everything happened on YouTube. But if you only knew then, Major Riot, if you only knew then what was coming for you, little buddy. And by the way, not sure if you noticed it or not during that clip, but 1,026 subs on Twitch. And fast forward to today, and he's begging to get 360 members. And a bunch of them aren't even real people. I love it. I love it. Can you guys please stop spamming the fucking sleep email? If you're bored, leave. If you're bored and you don't want to see post game, leave and stop fucking complaining like a little baby. And I mean that too. Stop being a little toxic jerks in the stream chat. You know what I'm saying? Idiots. Oh, he's doing boring post game. Then why the fuck are you still here? Leave. If you don't want to see post game, leave. Who's hungry? Me. Major Riot, you weren't gonna tip anyway, so shut the fuck up. <laughs> he goes, oh, if we leave, who's gonna tip you? No, none of you who are complaining were gonna tip. Not a single person complaining was going to tip to this stream. So you can just fucking leave if this is your problem. All right, get the fuck out. 
I'm not stupid. Shut up. Uh-oh. My Fuhrer makes an appearance during this clip and tells people that if they don't like the side content, to, then to get the fuck up out of here. And just like the last clip, if you notice the subs up there, he had 913. He treats them like shit. He eventually loses his partnership on Twitch and he can't figure out why he doesn't have more subs on YouTube. It's beautiful. But in this clip, Major Riot says, well, if we leave, who's going to tip you? And Phil tells him, well, you weren't going to tip me anyways, Major Riot, so get the fuck out of here. And again, if you only knew what was coming down the line, it's like Phil's predicting the future here, but Major Riot just can't take the hint hint. Well, don't worry, my good friend, because just like Superhound, Phil is coming for you. All right, thank you for the cheer. Tim will slice cheer. said, I made Monday Michelangelo's lasagna night. As in my 10-hour workday, I put it in an hour before I'm done with work. And at the end, I sprinkle extra cheese on top. And I put it under the broiler and let it crisp up so good. I'm shocked how good it is for frozen food. I told you. I think their meat lasagna, their veggie lasagna, their eggplant parmesan, all three of those are outstanding. And Major Riot cheered. 100-bit cheer. He says, family-sized can of Chef Boyardee. Phil Kipsu's a family-sized can himself and a few angry bites. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so that's the biggest cheer of the night for Major Riot. Somehow we let this guy get to be the top cheer of the night. I don't know what's going on tonight. <clears throat> Thank you for that. We currently have no tips. So I have no tips to add to the leaderboard. Please, guys, if you can support me with tips tonight, please do. I need the help. All right, let's continue. Hey, Timbo, good to see you again, buddy. I feel like we just saw you in the last part of the video. Well, anyways, it's good to have you back, my friend. Hopefully you never change your name to Chicken Man in the future. But if you actually listen to the clip, Timbo was talking about food, of course. What a shock. But he slips his 10-hour work day in there. This dude is slaving away at work every day to just come home and throw that money away on Phil. And then he just decides to declare bankruptcy all of a sudden. Can't make this shit up, man. But Major Riot cheers and tells, tells Phil that he consumes family-sized cans of Chef Boyardee in a few bites. Which I believe Phil could do, by the way. I definitely believe that the pig could do that. We then wrap it up with Dave crying that there's no tips yet. And he could really use the help, guys. So please tip and thanks in advance, you fucking trolls. Next one's a clip, a less a go. So let's see here. Uh, Major Riot Cheers in the kitchen of Phil Burnell. Nutrition and taste are represented in Phil's large collection of Chef Boyardee. Here we go again. And Snorlax Cheers, he says, can you help me? My name is Gro Grow Tent. I'm not even going to read anymore. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't want to pick that up. Oh my god, I'm picking up items I don't want like crazy now. I don't want a fucking barrel that weighs a million pounds. Okay. Golden Colts said it's it's available 5 p.m. Saturday. No, Golden Colts, I will not be home on Saturday. All day I'll be gone. I'm going grocery shopping. Then my wife's we're going out to eat. We're going out for the rest of the day to do stuff. I'm coming home and that's it. I don't have time to stream on Saturday. It's my day off. My day off means my day off, dude. I cannot stream on Saturday. <laughs> Golden Colts, get it through your fucking head that he can't stream on his day off, you stupid idiot. I've had enough of you dumb fucks in here making Phil's life miserable. Get out. But the clip started with Phil just speed reading through a major riot cheer, a Chef Boyardee cheer that he clearly didn't give two shits about. So much for him loving that Chef Boyardee meme that you were single-handedly keeping it alive and a blah, blah, blah. He then gets a cheer from Snorlax that says, can you help me? My name is Grow Tent. And Phil is so disgusted by it. He says he's not going to read it anymore. And he just turns away. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> I love it, man. I can't say it enough. This is what you get. All right, so now we're getting to the main event. Phil has lost his partnership, and now he's streaming on YouTube and literally harassing people into tipping him. And, well, let's see what he has to say about Major Riot specifically. That's right, Major Riot. Now is the time you would normally do a 100-bit cheer about Chef Boy RD, but you can't anymore. But you know what you can do? You could tip me a dollar. Yes, you can. There's no excuse why you should stop having crazy phobias about PayPal and you could tip the dollar and make your joke about Chef Boy RD and I'd still enjoy it. Yes. 
Either that or the meme's gonna die. You understand that, right? You were the one who was single-handedly upholding the Chef Boyardee meme on these streams. And now, it will end. Do you want that to happen? Yeah, Major Riot, I really don't know what to tell you. If you're that, like, like, if you're actually that paranoid and afraid of PayPal, you should probably seek help. I mean it. If you think that you putting your personal information into PayPal to send a tip to someone completely is going to give away all your personal information and basically ruin your life, I think you need help. I'm just being honest here. <laughs> I'm just being very honest here. If that's really what you believe, if you're that so much of conspiracy theories and shit, I, I, I don't think you're, you're, you're above help. I mean, what else can you do? I don't know what to tell you, dude. I don't know how many times I could tell you, how does it make logical sense that you feel PayPal will give away your personal information when they can be sued into oblivion if they did that? PayPal would overnight go out of business. They would lose lawsuit after lawsuit if people's personal information was divulged by PayPal. So, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about or why you would believe that. Get Van to me $1.30 thirty and said... <laughs> he's just trying to pretend he's Major Riot. He says, I, I bet you'd like me to double stuff your pasta shapes. Wink, wink. Basically, he's trying to say this is the, the silly stuff that Major Riot used to say. Actually, no. I uh, Listen, I appreciated Major Riot's silly meme that he did with Fresh Air Boy RD. I actually thought it was funny. But I also think it's absolutely ridiculous. The guy is actually so paranoid about PayPal. Like, oh my God, if I use PayPal, I'm going to get doxxed. It's like, what are you talking about? Yes, a major corporation that could be sued for ridiculous amounts of money is going to dox you. I just don't understand it. It's like I said, when, when you use PayPal, the only information that gets given away is the information you want to be given away. The email address you you link to that PayPal, whatever name you put on the PayPal account, you choose that. Like, all of this is, is like, so... It's commonplace. Everyone knows this commonplace info. It's not a big deal. I don't know why, why people are believing this conspiracy theory shit. Unbelievable. So, Major Riot says in chat, that now is normally the time he would have done his Chef Boyardee meme. But he can't do it anymore because he doesn't want to give Phil his personal information through PayPal. Phil says, quote, yeah, you're right. You normally would do it, but you know what you can do is tip me a dollar. Yes, you can. There's no excuse why. You should stop having crazy phobias about PayPal and you can tip your dollar and make your joke about Chef Boyardee and I'd still enjoy it, unquote. He then gives another quote of, Either that or the meme's gonna die. You understand that, right? You were the one that was single-handedly upholding the Chef Boyer D meme on these streams, and now it will end. Do you want that to happen? I don't even know where to start. How fucked up is that? It's like he's talking to children and trying to scare them into something. It's pathetic. I'd like to see you talk to anybody like this out in the real world instead of your little fucking hug box. He then tells Major Riot that, quote, if you're that paranoid and afraid of PayPal, you should probably seek help. I mean it, unquote. Again, step outside and talk to somebody like that bitch and let's see what happens. He then says that it doesn't make sense that PayPal would give away your personal info when you tip somebody and that they would go out of business overnight for something like that. First off, you're blatantly lying and we all know that. PayPal does reveal some of your info when you tip someone. They absolutely do. But it's not PayPal that Major Riot and others are concerned about. It's the person that's taking these tips that they're concerned about. Because they don't know what you're going to do with that information. Whether you're going to pass it on to the three-letter bitch. Whether you're going to post the information in your mod discord. Which you've 100% done before. Or if you're going to threaten them like you did with Be the Awesome One. Now clearly you're too much of a pussy for that last one. But you've still done it in the past. And now that I've lost my partnership with YouTube, the only way people can support me is through tipping. But do you see the difference here? I don't even have to bring this shit up because there's a certain way you're supposed to act, motherfucker. And Phil, we're in the same age range. You're supposed to know this shit already. It shouldn't take for some Discord leak or for someone like Major Riot to have to throw this shit in your face for you to learn, uh, maybe I shouldn't do stuff like that. I mean, how pathetic is this? So Phil then says that he actually did enjoy the Chef Boyardee meme, and, well, let's see how much he actually did enjoy it. Major Riot just cheers and nothing returns from the Nightmare Nest of Phil's bathroom unscathed that we devour Chef Boyardee, or we really need to do this again, alright. Alright, fair enough. Uh, Major Riot cheered 100 bits as at the 450 pound man raced toward him, Phil closed his eyes and pictured cans of Chef Boyardee, hoping his thoughts of his favorite meal would bring peace.
There you go. Thank you, Major Ryan, for a cheer. And he talks more about Chef Boyardee. Very nice. What a shot. Oh my god, let's see here. Major Riot chooses to this day feels no idea if the cans of Chef Boy RD obeys him or if Phil obeys the cans of Chef Boy RD. There you go. So let's see here. Uh, Major Riot chooses in the kitchen of Phil Burnell, nutrition and taste are represented in Phil's large collection of Chef Boy RD. Here we go again. Oh boy. Major Riot did 100 bit chairs. I see you've learned nothing, Phil. You still devour a can of Chef Boy RD rather than help your neighbors fend off several packs of wolves. Very exciting. All right. Major Riot cheers if Phil carries on the legacy of those who devoured Chef Boyardee before him by continuing to devour Chef Boyardee. Very nice. Not really. All right, and shout out to Hate Army Watch for that compilation. Did a good job on that one, homie. And I don't know about y'all, but he didn't seem to give a flying fuck about Major Riot, the Chef Boyardee meme, or anything he had to say altogether. It's funny how you're willing to say anything in the moment. Almost like a crackhead, just so you can continue to get a dollar off of somebody. And don't forget about that. This was all over a dollar cheer that Major Riot would occasionally give him. I don't know any other way to sum it up, man. It's just pathetic. So Major Riot's in the chat needling Phil about PayPal. And he says two things in particular. And let's see what those things are. So the first message reads... I got off the phone with PayPal and they did confirm that personal information would be shared with a verified account. Now, whether he's telling the truth or not, he was actually on the phone. Who fucking knows? But what he said is true. So he got that info from somewhere. Next picture. Everyone just needs to be aware that you were giving some of your personal information. If you tip with a verified account, if you are still chill with that, that's up to you. I'm not okay with it. So Chef Boyardee is a, a done. Now, clearly those two messages would make anyone fly off the handle and make them lose their shit. And, oh wait, it wouldn't, right? I mean, maybe that's just Phil we're talking about. So, I hope everyone has on their black suits or is at least dressed nice because Phil's about to commit murder on camera again. Now, it's not as bad as DJ Runo, but we still had to hold a closed casket service for Major Riot because look how they massacred my boy. And let's see what happened. All right, Major Riot, goodbye. I've had enough of you. I'm seriously had enough of your shit. Get him out of here. I'm tired of it. I'm trying to play a game and he's in here fucking talking shit again. I'm like, enough of this, dude. Get the fuck out. I can't concentrate on a fucking game with an idiot fucking talking nonsense in my chat. I can't do it. Get the fuck out. Jesus, man. You fucking conspiracy theorists and nut jobs. I had enough of you. Gee, I wonder why I couldn't concentrate. We lost. I wonder why. There. Nosebreaker. Jesus. Had enough. Contact down. Okay. There. Get rid of these idiots. We're gonna have to weed these idiots out over the next week or so. Since they all want to come all at once now. <laughs> Fucking morons. Alright. We got time for one more game, guys. And hopefully this one I can actually concentrate on. And not be distracted by fucking morons. Ugh. Stupid idiots. And shout out to Hate Army Watch for that compilation. Did a good job. I'll link it down in the description. Be sure to check it out. But... What a positive, fun, relaxing, chill stream. I mean, gee, Phil, I can't understand why you have the reputation you do or why you still have to constantly beg for money every day after 13 years. I wonder why people like PewDiePie, AVGN, Dr. Disrespect, even Ninja to a lesser degree, all left your ass behind in the past and moved on to bigger and better things. Yet here you are arguing with someone and making an ass out of yourself over a fucking dollar. And I can't stress it enough, man. You deserve this life, buddy. And now, as if that wasn't bad enough, let's all say hello to a very mature, very intelligent young man by the name of Avadar, a Viking. Let's fucking go. First question. 
This is from Brightside Viking. <clears throat> and he says the following. Uh, Phil, I'm fairly new to your content. And really all I knew about you before coming in here was that you were tainted by someone else. I have seen you play Street Fighter now, and people that say that you can't play it basically are wrong and think it can go fuck themselves. Uh, I have not found uh, a Philpedia or anything like that yet, so I'm curious on your, your career previous to becoming a YouTuber. What did you dream of becoming when you were growing up? And do you have an education? You type really fast. Sometimes your written language looks better than your verbal. So it makes you think that maybe you have some background in customer service or public relations. Uh, there are more and more people that make their YouTube as their living. People that give up a career in some other field of work to come and do it. Uh, like you once did. Something tells me that many uh, are going to try and many are probably going to fail. How hard is it to make a YouTube career work? I know it's very dependent on where you live in the world. As in my country, we have very good social and economic uh, situations. So the state, so the state would carry you and pay. Oh, the state would carry you and pay your expenses if what you made on YouTube could not support you 100. percent Wow. Anyway, I keep going here. Do you see yourself doing this in 10 years? Is this what you plan on doing indefinitely? Oh, and for the hell of it, what is your view on drugs and alcohol? So all that's from Brightside Viking. He's a first time kind of pledgy here and wanted to get a bunch of questions answered. So I'll do my best. All right. And I cut it off because Phil rambled on for like 10 minutes. But could you suck this guy off anymore? Jeez, man. So let's think about this for a minute. Vidar said he came across Phil and decided to check him out for himself because he heard he was quote unquote tainted. First off, who does that sound like to you? Oh, Phil, I heard of all this bad stuff about you, but I watch you now and it's not true. And shout out if you get that reference. But second, who sends a first message like this to someone? DSP even said Vidar was a first time pledge on Patreon, meaning this was his first real interaction with him outside of a stream. What the hell kind of opening message is this? Say you meet a girl for the first time and you want to try and talk to her. Do you send her a 10,000 page letter outlining every reason why y'all are a perfect match and should get married and have kids? Because this is what it comes off like. But during the middle of it, Vidar mentions a very important thing. He says that where he lives, the state takes care of you if you can't take care of yourself. They essentially pay for your life for you as if you had a career. Now, obviously I'm summarizing it, but that's gonna come into play all throughout this part of the video. And by the way, did you see Phil's eyes light up when he read that? That would be his fucking dream. Next one's a clip, let's go. <laughs> oh, shout out to Eternia Forever, who's he's going to pick up some lunch, but he wanted to leave a 200 bit cheer before he left. Thank you, Eternia, appreciate that. So that makes Eternia the cheerleader for the day so far. As you can see, I reset the cheer count on the stream. So he is now the top. Whoa. Wow. Literally, as I said, that Viking, uh, Darth, Darth Vidar Viking just left a 201-bit cheer. He says, I'll take that. So he trumped, <laughs> he already trumped the cheerleader uh, status for Eternia. Wow. So already we got competition. Very nice. Um, but anyway, yeah. I was looking at my, my channel banner for the King of Hate vlogs. I looked at it. I was like, God damn, this thing is like, it's probably like four to five years old. No lie. And I'm looking at it like, man, it's so outdated. And it, it, the channel could definitely use some sprucing up, okay? So, if you are uh, interested, if you uh, have the, any kind of graphical art capability, you know, if you have any kind of design capability, and you're interested in possibly maybe uh, designing a new channel banner for the King of Hate vlogs, please, uh, you know, send me, send me something. Darksidephil at thekingofhate.com. All right? I definitely need a new channel banner right away because I got to get it to not say that it's with Machinima anymore. Okay? Holy crap. Retro just did a 250 bitch here saying, pick me up some Panini Eternia. And then Zebra did a 300 bitch here saying, I am... Oh, I deleted his message. It said, I'm the best cheerleader ever. So we got four people in heated competition right now for cheerleader. But right now, Zebra has taken up the lead. Damn. A very nice start to today's double gameplay streams. Thank you, guys. Good lord, man. And this one brought back flashbacks for me. It's like I was back in Nam or something. This is what it was like back then. If you weren't around during this time, 
That clip sums up what it used to be like. Now, this was when I first got into this whole thing, but that's exactly the way I remember it. Essentially, a good old boys club. Some dumbass starts the clip with a cheer and says he's going to go pick up lunch. OK, thanks for announcing that. And without missing a beat, Vidar cheers one penny more to become the cheerleader. Kind of weird, but OK. And of course, the one thing that never changes, Phil asking someone to send him channel art free of charge. He can't afford to pay you guys, but send it anyways because he really needs the help right now. We then get a cheer by another subhuman, and he tells the original cheerer to pick him up some food while he's out. We then get another subhuman that tops them all and says, I am the best cheerleader ever. If I hadn't seen this stuff in the past, I wouldn't have believed that it ever happened. That sounds like an actual fucking cult. Four people just bidding against each other for their master's praise, but they're having a conversation while doing it. They can't have the conversation amongst themselves. They have to send money and Phil has to read it out. It's bizarre. I guess he did the job. Oh, Viking just did a 100 or 256 bit cheer. So now Viking is the cheerleader. There it is. Wait a minute, Nobert did a 257 bit cheer. <laughs> I can't keep up. Dude, I can't keep up. They're battling back and forth so hard. And every time I look, I look around, there's another message that's above my head. Holy shit, dude. <clears throat> Uh-oh. He saw it. Who's responsible for this? <laughs> look at that. A predictable reaction oh. for someone who knows what we mean did by it pop up? desire. Did the message pop up? Big Viking just did a 258 pitch here, but I don't know if the message popped up or not. <laughs> so now Viking. Viking is the leader of 258. Good lord. Wait, what happened? I missed it. Was there just a- there's another cheer. Wait a minute. There was a 501-bit cheer by, by Viking. Then there was a 504-bit cheer from Nolbert. And he says, eat it, Sheriff. Then Darth Vidar Viking did a 505-bit cheer to beat him out. I missed all of that because I was reading the menus. Oh my god, you guys are going crazy. You guys got- <laughs> I hope you guys didn't uh, max out your freaking uh, credit cards. <laughs> Seriously. Damn, of course, I, look at this. I could have had a jack- Disgusting. There's no other word for it. Quote, I hope you guys didn't max out your credit cards, unquote. And then he laughs. Well, isn't that fucking Shawn Michaels? And if you know the history on Vidar, then you know why it's screwed up. But just look at him having a blast. Meanwhile, these people with mental illnesses are just vying for his attention and essentially gambling against each other. And he does absolutely nothing to slow it down, to try and stop them. Nothing. Just keeps pointing at the pop-ups above his head and laughing and having a good old time. It's fucking sick. Well, we got a cheer war erupting in the stream chat here as I'm playing the, the tutorial of the game. Let's see here. Damn, it's going back and forth between uh, Viking and Howling the Deep. Viking's been doing like 113, 115 bit cheer, and then Howl's going back and forth with him. Damn. So these guys are going back and forth. I'm certainly not going to keep saying every single cheer here as they fight. But right now, Howling the Deep is the cheerleader. If I go down there, I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. It looks like a bunch of letters in it, like acid. Ooh. And if I go up, I can't go up here yet. No. Okay. So through the tubes. Damn, Vikings did 119 bit here and then Howl did 120 bit here. And if you thought I was overreacting in the last clip, well, here's some more for you. Here's Vidar again getting into a cheer war a few days later with someone else. And if you look him up on Pig Pig Go and actually go through the links, you'll be able to find this happening all the time. But getting back to the clip, DSP says, quote, so these guys are going back and forth. I'm certainly not going to keep saying every single cheer here as they fight, unquote. Let that statement sink in. As they fight. Like this is WWE Smackdown or some shit. But no, it's two literal fuck-ups. Cheering one penny more than the other every single time for hours. And again, not only does he not put a stop to it, he encourages it and says he's not going to get in their way while they fight. Gee, Phil, I wonder why you have the reputation that you do. Ha 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 ha! Darth Vidar Vikings did a 200-bit cheer showing that that guy who had trolled what he had said earlier in the week. 
We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. Yeah, I know. And then he said something about my girlfriend, too. He's like, oh, I've been, I've been doing stuff with your girlfriend. I'm like, what the fuck, man? And this guy comes in here this morning and he expects like he's going to get honest answers to his questions when he's been saying insulting stuff to me all week. Pretty annoying. Codename1 says, yeah, but the guy who ha gave bits and he wanted to sub. I, I don't care. Dude, listen. Yes, I appreciate the support, but support comes in many ways. And yeah, you could just throw money at a person, but if you throw money at a person and you act like an asshole, or you insult them, uh, or you do stupid shit, then you're not supporting that person. The bottom line is you're just paying to troll. It's a paid troll. And that's fucked up. I want people who are positive, who are fun, who want to come here and hang out, and feel like this is a cool interactive room where you can... You know, interact with me and others, right, in the stream chat. How different is this from the old environment where it used to kind of be very isolated? Now we all interact together and we have fun together, right? Um, you know, it's not about that. It's not about paying your way into my good graces. That's fucked up, in my opinion. It really is. It's fucked up. Yeah, here it is. Here's his other... So, so Viking just uh, reposted the guy's uh, other message from earlier in the week claiming that he and, and my, my fiancé, Leanna, have been going out for drinks together. Uh, I can tell you for sure that hasn't happened because she, goes, she, only, she works during the day and, you know, I know where she is. She tells me where she's going if she's hanging out with friends or whatever and she doesn't drink out, out by herself. Maybe she'll go get a coffee or something, but she doesn't go out drinking. She only goes out drinking with me. She, has, she barely ever drinks. So, this guy is a grade A troll. And no, you cannot pay your way to the top and think that you can troll me and do stupid, annoying shit. Uh, you know, just because you're, you're cheering and stuff in the stream chat. Get out of here. The bottom line is we're here to have fun, right? We don't want to deal with this stupid shit. It's childish stuff. So, get the fuck out. Alright, let's start at the beginning of it, man. Quote. We must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children, unquote. And then he adds, yeah, I know, onto the end of it. My Fuhrer making a special guest appearance in the, in the video. Jesus, man. And then, quote, I want people who are positive, who are fun, who want to come here and hang out and feel like this is a cool, interactive room where you can, you know, interact with me and others in the stream chat, unquote. So fucked up, man. And I say that all the time, but can you see why? You want people to come have fun and hang out and be interactive. Meanwhile, they literally bankrupt themselves like Timbo two times. They dump $25,000 into you in two years like the three-letter bitch. Or they end up living in a shelter like Vidar because they wasted all their fucking money on you. And that's a shoot, baby. This dude was living in some room with another man, a stranger. And Vidar, if you're listening, I'm sorry, man. But why would you do this shit for this guy? Anyways, so the original guy said that he and Rihanna had been going out for drinks together. And DSP, of course, has to put an end to that rumor immediately by saying that she works during the day. And Rihanna tells him where she is, if she's hanging out with friends or whatever. And that she only drinks when she's out with Phil. Based on what you just said, she could have easily been cheating on you with someone from work, with someone while she's out with friends, which you just admitted that she does. Meanwhile, you're at home in your pajamas playing video games, begging the dregs of society for money. Why wouldn't she go out and look for a real man? Which is what your new whore is probably out doing, coincidentally. Oops. And speaking of Rihanna... What the hell? Whoa! Uh, I'm frozen. Did you guys see that? What the hell? The whole game froze up. What is happening in this game? So buggy. Enemies! What are you doing? I can't hear a word you're saying. The, the game is so loud in my head my headphones right now. I can't hear what you're saying. I'm not gonna be Jack, able to. Look out there, Pathfinder. Wanted to extend my thanks and I can't hear what you're saying at all. Happy Taking out oh, all happy cats. Easter. 
Now I can hear. Now I finally stop playing this loud ass music. You showed me where to head. Ah, you would have been fine without me. But you didn't drive all this way for me to kiss your ass. Here, your mm. reward. Glad someone from the next is competent. <laughs> mm. Oh boy. See you Stay around, safe, asshole. Sally. That's the goal. So I finished the mission, but did that up the viability of the planet at all? I have no idea. I don't even know how to tell. Ooh, we got a few cheers. Both Viking and King of Hypocrisy did 50 bit cheers saying hello to Leanna. See, I bring. I, I make it rain up in here. Oh, I got 100% viability now on this planet, so apparently I did it. Apparently I'm done here. The bridge to go to Aya and do this crappy mission. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna leave now now that I've seen that horrifying couch and yes. that shirtless man and your That's the least of the troubles of this game. <laughs> that couch. Really? Oh, that's you know what I forgot to do? Troubling. I forgot to do these missions, strike team missions. I sent them out last time I played. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go now and All you right. can uh, do your thing on that couch. If you do, <laughs> please please shower. No Sh shower thoroughly and uh, sleep on the couch. Yes, sleep on the sticky couch. Yeah, well, no, you're not sleeping in, in my goddamn bed if you don't <laughs> fucking sleep on that fucking couch. I don't know. I don't care if you sleep or... I don't, you I'll shouldn't even sit on that damn email. couch. The fuck? At least, at least be like an old Jewish woman to get some fucking plastic over it. God. <laughs> it's disgusting. Oh, I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, you, have, you have fun with but that. But there's more couch fun to come. You're going to miss it. Oh... Oh god, the pun that you made with the. Oh, there's not. There's more fun to come. No, no, Where are you going? No. Oh no. <laughs> She's gonna miss all the fun. The fun is coming and coming and coming again. All right. Well, I got a few cheers. I have to give. I have. To, I have to give shout outs for. Uh, let's see. King of Hypocrisy did a ten bit cheer. He says, "Leanna, you need to. You should come on stream more often." Phil, how come your new soulmate doesn't pop in every now and then and say hi and act like she actually cares about you or loves you? That's very weird. But then two of the subhumans cheer because they've probably never seen a girl before, and they say hi to Rihanna. And Panda says, quote, see, I make it rain up in here, unquote. And how come your new whore doesn't make it rain up in here, Phil? That makes me sad. But getting back to the clip, he's legit just ignoring her, making her feel unwelcome. And again, going back to the last clip, why wouldn't she have gone out and had drinks with that other guy? Especially considering how you treated her and acted around her. The only time he was having fun in that whole clip was when she got up and left. Then he started making his stupid couch joke. Very hilarious, Phil. Way to deflect from the fact that you masturbated on live stream in front of thousands of children. All right, and now we get to the main event of the video and so much happened here. It's hard to sum it all up. So I'll let Phil try and tell you what happened and then I'll condense it down as much as I possibly can. The next one's a clip, a less a go. Um. That being said, I do not control, I do not uh, order around people to do stuff on my behalf, all right? In particular, when it comes to white knighting, all right? And I talked, I recently just talked about this in the last couple of months. I can't remember the last time I actually addressed it, but I'll address it here, all right? People all the time seek to do nasty shit to me. They make shit up about me. They attack me. They slander me. They do stupid shit, Okay. They do all over the internet. They do this. Okay. And it sucks. Because I really have no recourse against it. You guys know I'm one man. I don't have a team of people here for damage control. I can't refute every negative thing that someone says about me. Oh, I don't have time for it. I'm constantly streaming and working. I'm being here to have fun. Alright. And that's the whole point of the matter. Is I'm here to have fun. And put out fun streams for you. And that's it. That's all I'm here for. Okay. People constantly are saying nasty shit about me. I mean, the most recent thing, as, as many of you probably know, people completely fabricating a story about me apparently hiring an escort to come spend time with me for Christmas 
uh, instead of it actually being my girlfriend, and supposedly the pictures that I took of my girlfriend decorating my Christmas tree isn't really my girlfriend, it's an escort or something. It's insanity. It's complete horseshit. It's bullshit, all right? And obviously, the only thing I can tell you is it's bullshit. Don't pay attention to those fucking people because they're, they're, they're obsessed. They're crazy. They're actually fucked up in the head to be saying and doing shit like this. You know what I mean? Who wouldn't even know what the, what the fuck they're trying to, to do with this, okay? I miss that escort shit, man. That's when I first came into everything. Right after that started. Right after SOK disbanded. And the escort shit got proven to be fake. But it was still hilarious. Good times, man. Good times. But, quote, I do not control. I do not order around people to do stuff on my behalf. Unquote. Whether you ordered Vidar around or not, I have no idea. Maybe he went to Kiwi Farms and started doing that shit by himself. Because he was obsessed with you. But what I do know is that I've seen Discord leaks where you're talking to your mods like a fucking Gestapo. Telling them what they can and can't do on stream. Who they can or can't unban. Hell, I've seen you mention detractor memes that you shouldn't even know about. Shit you claim you have no idea about when the camera's on. But once you're in the safety of your little mod Discord server, you have no problem bringing it up. How about... Humbling the rule breakers into submission. Did you think we were going to forget about that? And I bet if you ask that motherfucker on stream about that statement, he'll either play stupid or call you an idiot and say you're lying and ban you. Now again, why should we believe that you didn't put out shit in Vidar's head or that you didn't put shit in Vidar's head, essentially gaslighting him about what the detractors were doing to you and he took it upon himself to white knight for you? That sounds like what happened to me. All right. However, there are some people who take it upon themselves, and this is not my doing. I want to make this very clear. Never did I order anyone to go over to some negative place where these kind of people who obsess about me constantly fester and where they fucking roam. And I never ordered anyone to go do anything. All right. Never. And there seems to be this misconception that, well, Phil doesn't publicly talk about it, but what he constantly does is he has certain people go and do white knight for him. And they go over there and they harass these fucking people and they threaten them and they do all this shit. No, I don't do that. I, I don't even know anything about it. I'm serious. I don't know anything about this shit. I don't. I know nothing about it whatsoever. I don't pay attention to it. All I hear is what I hear through third parties. I mean, this fucking obsessive Twitter account that was, that I don't know if it's really a, a girl or not, I could give a fuck, who's claiming she's an escort that was here with me during Christmas, was banned the first day she started saying creepy shit. I blocked her on Twitter. And I never paid any mind whatsoever ever again. And then I got other people kind of me, Phil, did you hear what they said today? Did you hear what they said today? No, because I don't give a fuck. I'm just here to play games and have fun on the internet. That's it. I don't have a crack team of, of fucking infiltrating spies and assassins who I send out on the internet to fucking e assassinate people. It doesn't exist. People are out of their fuck. Again, just as crazy as they are to, to fabricate the shit they fabricate about me, they're just as crazy when it comes to their own wacky conspiracy theories, right? So, you know, people who go on the internet and go and defend me and or get into fights with these people who don't like me, I don't condone it. I don't defend it, and I don't want people doing it. I've said this before. I've said I don't want people white knighting for me. I don't think it's a good idea. Because all that happens is that these people get riled up even worse, and then they make shit up completely. All right, so another denial. Outright saying he had absolutely nothing to do with it. But then we get the quote, I'm just here to play games and have fun on the internet. That's it. I don't have a crack team of fucking infiltrating spies and assassins who I send out on the internet to fucking e-assassinate people. It doesn't exist, unquote. I'm not even going to rant here. You already know this is bullshit, but I'm going to play a clip for you. When I heard this, I immediately thought about this clip, and we're going to go straight into the next one after that, but just listen to this and remember what he said about assassins, infiltrating, etc., etc. In addition to that, I already know that you're in other other detractor chats constantly because people tell me about it all the time. <laughs> I don't actively seek that information. I don't. I don't actively seek that information whatsoever. But people snitch. 
I'll just get anonymous email. Here's evidence that Snow Carl is still talking shit about you in a detractor chat. There it is. I'm not looking for it, but you gotta, that's what I keep telling people. You gotta understand everything you do on the internet is public. Everything. You may think you're safe hiding in your little hidey holes of other chats and, and a, a Twitter feed over here. You may not think that I'm gonna look at. People find that stuff and end up just sending it to me. I don't even ask for it. I don't care. But then they send it to me. You know? So, I'm sorry, Snow Carl, but the only way I could ever believe that you actually are gonna reform yourself is if you completely shut yourself off from any kind of activity that's like Basically making fun of me, tearing myself and my family members a new one, constant annoying insults and criticism. You'd have to completely stay away from that for an extended period of time. I'd have to not hear from anyone that you're in detractor chats and shit for an extended period of time. And then you'd have to come to me and say, I really reformed. I've made my case now. Please let me back. And then I would consider it. But you have done none of those. So you're not coming back. Dark Viking. It's that simple. I don't want anyone going over anywhere, white knighting me. I don't condone anyone attacking anyone. I never sent anyone anywhere to attack anyone, ever. I didn't, okay? And by the way, it should be said that I've had words with certain people privately about it, and they're well aware of what I want, you know, what, what I don't want to happen. It's that simple. People will make shit up, all right? They will. And like, well, you know, Phil has people who are big donators, and they help him out. And he basically gives them free reign to do whatever they want. They could go do whatever the fuck they want. And he'll just condone it. First of all, alright. I don't get into the private lives of anyone who is a contributor to myself or my streaming. I don't. It's not my business. Just because you're on my stream and you, you, you send me a nice tip. Or you cheer every once in a while. Or maybe you, you pledge to my Patreon. It's not my business to pry into your private life, right? You can go do whatever the fuck you want in your own private life. It's none of my business. Why? Who am I... To say, just because you're a contributor of mine, okay, that I need to now babysit you and make sure that you don't ever do anything on the internet that I disapprove with. That's that's ludicrous, right? That's absolutely fucking ludicrous. It's not my place, and I have my own life. I don't have time to fucking micromanage every single person who's a contributor to my, my stuff. I don't, and I'm not going to, and I'm never going to, right? What you do in your private life is your own choice, your own volition. All right, so he's rambling on again that he had nothing to do with it. But then he says, quote, and by the way, it should be said that I've had words with certain people privately about it. And they're well aware of what I want, uh, you know, of what I don't want to happen, unquote. Now, that was a slip of the tongue, but it still looks bad. But here's part of the problem. Kiwi Farms told you to do this publicly so that way Vidar would learn some kind of a lesson and so others would get discouraged from doing it. But no, your ego is way too big. Nobody else is gonna tell you what to do, so you just come on and say that you've talked to certain people privately. Number one, why should anyone believe you? Number two, you didn't even say who you talked to privately. And number three, you could have said anything behind the scenes. Kinda like the clip I just fucking played. This guy's so dumb, man. But then he mentions that people criticize him because he lets his big donators do whatever they want and he doesn't do shit about it. Kind of like your biggest donator doxing your fucking mods and viewers. Kind of like him doxing detractors and you pretending like it didn't happen. I mean, it might as well be a repeat of Vidar. It's the same fucking shit. It's insanity. This is supposed to be a video gameplay stream and it devolves into all of this. He then says... He, didn't, he doesn't get into the private lives of his donators, which that's a good policy. Absolutely, you shouldn't get into their private lives. But he says, quote, just because you're on my stream and you send me a nice tip or you cheer every once in a while, or maybe you pledge to my Patreon, it's not my business to pry into your private life, unquote. Do you see the lying and manipulation going on? Did Vidar send you a nice tip or cheer every once in a while? Does the three-letter bitch send you a nice tip or cheer every once in a while? How about Pastriarchy and Lysa for Soul and Jack's fucking Raxor? Do they send you a nice tip every once in a while? Because I'm pretty sure they give you thousands of dollars a year. And that's not even an exaggeration. That's what they do. But he has to spin it to a nice tip or cheer every once in a while. So he doesn't have to face the reality of who he is and what he's become. And the way he takes advantage 
of these mentally ill people. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. When all this stupid bullshit story was happening regarding me and fake escorts and all this bullshit over the past month. Again, I'm not even going to go into the the, the, the story because it's so stupid. Okay. Um, some people took it upon themselves. You know, one of them was my my moderator here, uh, Vidar Viking. And another one was actually Kay Galleon, who was a former fan of mine. Who's still on my forums but doesn't really like my stuff or watch my videos anymore. Amongst, I think, a few other people as well. They went over, um, they went over to this place, this, this, this website, these forums or whatever, and basically started attacking people who were propagating this story. They, uh, you know, I guess, again, I don't know what really happened because I have no part of this place. I will never go to this place and I will not be a part of it, especially because they track IPs and do all kinds of shit when you go over there, which is why I keep telling people don't go over there. It's bad for everyone. To go over there and be a part of that kind of shit. It's bad for everyone possible involved in this community. To be involved with negative detractor shit. And I said that publicly a million times recently. And I'll say it again. Okay. I don't know what happened. Alright. But all I know is. People went over there. And basically started. You know. Arguing. And defending me. White knighting me. And then apparently it got into nasty personal arguments. And then apparently, again, I don't know because I was not over there. And I'm not going to look at any bullshit that anyone puts in front of me because I don't give a fuck. But apparently there might have been doxing. There might have been threats. There might have been all kinds of shit going back and forth. Now, I said this yesterday on Twitter and I'll say it again. I've had the same shit happen to me, if not worse, right? So isn't it nice and hypocritical of people who over the years have physically threatened me, have doxxed me, have swatted me, have done all these horrible things to me, that when all of a sudden it happens to them and they get a taste of their own fucking medicine because once again they're promoting a story that's complete bullshit and slanderous about me, oh god, now that's horrible that you would do that to us. I mean, forget the fact that Phil's been putting up with this for the past four years. Oh, it's horrible that this happens to us, okay? Hey, KG, where you been, you fucking fruitcake? It's nice to see him get thrown under the bus, too, because that's exactly what he deserves. Another one of these idiots that showered DSP with money, thinking that's going to buy his friendship. And then DSP tosses him in the trash when he doesn't need him anymore. And that's exactly what happened. Try to spin it any way you want, but that's what happened, buddy. But then DSP says he would never go to Kiwi Farts. Because it's a terrible place, and they track IPs and shit. Well, gee, fell. I'm pretty sure you tracked IPs on your fucking honeypot of a forum. Again, do we have to talk about Be The Awesome One? And how you threatened him and told him he had his IP address, you piece of shit? So DSP then says that he didn't look at the info because he doesn't trust Kiwi Farms. And everything might have been fabricated or photoshopped. He then says, quote, Apparently, there might have been doxing, there might have been threats, there might have been all kinds of shit going back and forth. Vidar was on there threatening to kill people, you fucking idiot. But oh, I didn't see it and there may have been doxing. Get the fuck up out of my face with that bullshit. You know, so here's what happened, folks. So yesterday I talked all about this on pre-stream. And I get told, well, well, the reason I mentioned this on pre-stream is because this group of people are doxing people. They're actually going around and looking at viewers of mine. All right. And they're doxing them. They're finding out their personal info, their name, their address. In some cases, their IP address, their personal Facebooks. They're looking at their family members on their Facebooks and making fun of them and stuff like that. It's stupid shit, quite honestly. It really can't do, be, do anything but just stupid trolling. I know for a fact because it's happened to me. And really all it is is a fucking annoying when people harass you for a few days on social media or whatever. You know, it's not that big of a deal. But the bottom line is my viewers are concerned because they don't want to be harassed. And they don't deserve to be harassed. Why my viewers are involved in this, I have no idea. Because I have nothing to do with it. And my viewers have nothing to do with it. So literally what this situation is, is people who are malicious on the internet. Using malicious means to harass people that have nothing to do with any situation whatsoever. Because they can. Okay? It's that fucked up. Alright? It's seriously that fucked up. It's... Internet extortion is what it is, okay? It's internet extortion is what, exactly what this is. Um, and it's illegal, but, you know, it's the internet, folks, so you have no power over it, right? Um, 
So after talking about this on pre-stream yesterday and publicly denouncing anyone who would be involved with these people and say, don't fuck with them, don't mess with them at all, leave it alone because you're hurting all of us, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. All right. Then I get told, you need to publicly name names of the people who went over there. In particular, you got to mention your mod Viking. You got to mention that he went over there. Again, I don't know that he did. I don't care that he fucking did. I publicly already said I don't want anyone going over there. And I, I do not support anyone's actions going over there and doing any kind of negative actions. And, you know, I denounce those actions because I don't ever want them to happen again. I just want it to end. But that's not good enough. Now they move the bar. Okay, now you have to publicly announce that it was your mod, Viking, who did this, right? So a day goes by, and Phil didn't do what Kiwi Farms explicitly told him to do, which was publicly call out Vidar and admonish him for doing what he did on Kiwi Farms. That's literally it. So you heard all the clips of him making excuses, saying he didn't even fucking look at anything, that he spoke to someone privately, etc., etc. So... Kiwi Farm says that's not good enough. And the longer they have Vidar on the forums spurging out, they're going to dox pay pigs one after the other. Understandably, his pay pigs get worried and complain to Phil, who comes back the next day and pretty much just doubles down on how stupid he is. Instead of just naming Vidar and telling him to stop it and that he's fucked up or that he fucked up. He keeps saying he doesn't know what's going on and that he doesn't want anybody white knighting for him. Despite him getting doxxed and swatted and harassed, etc, etc. He's low-key justifying what Vidar is doing. Just so he doesn't piss him off and he can keep getting those tips, cheers, subs, and Patreon money. And by the way, Vidar was like a $100 patron at least. And it was probably more, to be honest. There's no telling how much he was giving this guy monthly. But anyway, it doesn't matter what I say or do anymore at this point, And today proves that. Because now twice, twice, I've completely gone out of my way to tell people, don't fuck with people on detractor websites, leave them alone, stay away. If it was Viking who went over there and did this shit that they're accusing him of, I don't agree with it. I don't want him to ever do it again. And I don't agree with that he did it in the past. Okay. But that's not enough for them. Now they want me to, to admit that he did it and all that, which I can't. There's no way I can admit that he did anything. I wasn't there. Anything you show me now could have been doctored, and I don't give a fuck anymore. You've literally turned me completely off to the whole situation, and it's your fault. Dear detractors, it's your fault. You're never going to get what you want because you went too far. You went too far. You actually got me to the point where I'm so apathetic at this point because I've done everything I possibly can. I went above and beyond what you asked for by telling anyone in the future ever to never go over there. And now you're like, oh, well, that's not enough. Well, no, you did it. You're done. You got everything out of me that you were going to get. And now you did. it's your fault. You can blame yourself. There you have no one else to blame but your fucking self because you couldn't, first of all, didn't even contact me directly on any of this at all. You just posted shit up on your own forums. I don't read your forums, dummy. I don't go to your fucking stupid negative places to begin with of the fucking bowels of the internet where you roam, the toilets of the fucking internet that you you spin around constantly. I'm not there, and I never will be there, all right? Never. <laughs> and I don't have nothing to do with it. If you actually wanted action, you should have acted like mature adults, which you're obviously not, and you should have contacted me via official means. You could have emailed me. You could have actually directly, directly contacted me via the forums. You could have contacted me via Twitter. You didn't do that. Instead, you propagated this giant dramatic cloud of shit. And then you just expected that the waft of the shit was going to eventually get to me with what you exactly wanted in your fucking terms of your threats and your extortion plan. Okay? It's your fault. It's your fault now that I can never give you what you want because I can never believe you. Because now you've created such a cloud of shit around the situation that the stench will never fucking clear away. So now he's just being a baby and throwing a fucking fit until people give up and he gets his way. It's so pathetic. And by the way, this is supposed to be a video gameplay stream. And then he has the nerve to say, quote, you didn't even contact me on any of this directly at all, unquote. He says if they actually wanted action, 
They should have acted like mature adults and contacted him through official means. He tries so hard to make it sound like he's some legitimate business and he has some legitimate office and he works a nine to five. Meanwhile, he's there in his crusty ass pajamas, playing video games all day and begging the human bowels of the internet for money. And how the fuck are they even supposed to contact you when you block and ban anybody that even questions you, you fucking idiot. Now, the next one's gonna be the last clip for the video in, well, do you think Phil learned his fucking lesson? So, good luck. You have no, no one to blame but yourselves. You know, I can't stop you from doing what you're doing. Anything you do at this point is in your own morality and your own actions, so you're going to have to live with it. The fact that you're going to dox people and do nasty fucking shit to people, it's your own problem at this point, okay? I can't control what you do. I've done everything I possibly could do to, to, to stop you. I went above and beyond what you wanted. And what you want is impossible for me to give. As a logical human, you know, it wouldn't even mean anything. If you right now presented to me, oh, here's evidence. I can't even tell you definitively it's true or not. And admit that Viking did something or didn't do something. And it's your fault. Because you did this the wrong way. So, congratulations. Your giant effort to extort shit out of people has failed. You can do whatever the fuck you want moving forward. I can't affect it. I apologize to anyone who may be negatively affected moving forward by this bullshit. I tried as, you know, as well as I could to stop it. And, uh, you know, it's out of my hands now. And it's their fault, not mine. It's that simple. Okay? That's it, because that's it. You know, it's one thing. Oh, you know, Phil, we, don't, we want Phil to acknowledge this, so I acknowledge it. Oh, now we want Phil to acknowledge this, so I acknowledge it. Now we want Phil to acknowledge it. Enough. You know? Three strikes, you're out. Enough is fucking enough. If you had actually something you wanted done, you should have come to me first, but you didn't because you're morons. So there you go. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm done. Now I'm officially 100% done with it and I'm never going to address it again. Never. And they can do whatever the fuck they want. Obviously, I don't want them to do anything. And if they had an inch or an iota of morality in their beings, they would just say, well, it was fun while it lasted. It looks like, you know, it's over now. Uh, you know, we'll move on to the next thing. I'm sure we'll find another thing to hold Phil over the fire for. Another new dramatic bullshit story or whatever. Um, you know. And, and yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, it's just so stupid at this point. What can I do? I can't anymore. I don't know what else to say. I, you know, I can't. I mean, I wish. I wish that... Somehow, in 10 years of me making video game videos on the internet that I could have control over mentally ill people who hurt other people on the internet, I don't. And I can't give them what they want. They want an impossible thing I can't give them. Quote, I don't even know what else to say. I wish that somehow, in 10 years of me making video game videos on the internet, that I could have control over mentally ill people, unquote. Well, isn't that Shawn Michaels? So he spent the last five clips being big, bad, tough Burnell, but now he has to face the reality of what's about to happen. He apologizes to his viewers for what's about to happen to them, and he says he did everything possible. They asked you to do one fucking thing, and you couldn't even do that because you saw how much money was being thrown at you from that same person. And instead of trying to straighten this person out or teach them a little bit of a lesson, you played stupid and basically said, oh, there's nothing I can do. But why should anyone be surprised? You had the chance to help this person before, or at the very least, just give them some advice. And what did you do? You laughed and had a good old time and just encouraged them while they were, quote, fighting. Do you remember that? While they were getting into cheer wars for hours. Do you remember that? Or how about when they were living in a fucking shelter? Did you have any advice for them then? Or did you just throw them under the bus because the tips, cheers, subs, and Patreon money had dried up by that point? I don't know, Phil. I'll never understand why you get the amount of hate, trolling, and slander that you do. You seem like a pretty stand-up guy to me, my very best friend. And your wife's a whore, by the way. All right, and that's the video for today. Uh, there's going to be another one down the line at some point, but you know, these are just fucking draining, man. And I don't know how I was making these every week. 
I put up the first 20 every week and some of them within seven days, within a week, especially when I got pissed off about stuff. But we'll have another one at some point. But that was part 22. Hope you all enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort into this one. Uh, let me give a couple of quick shout outs and then a, a quick message at the end and we'll sign off. Um, shout out to Mark. There was no message, but thank you very much, homie. I appreciate it. Uh, Dan. Said he was just trying to show support after the channel got demonetized. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And some of these are older, but I haven't been making videos. So uh, holding no message, but I've seen him tip me before. So thank you very much, homie. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, Platty also showing support after the after YouTube cucked me. So appreciate it, homie. And thank you. And I know that's his second or third time. Uh, Tim, who I talk to pretty regularly on Discord, and he's given me a couple of pictures to use in the past, and I'm very grateful for your support and for the, you know, just for the pictures and shit. Thank you, homie. And finally, Latino Mike, who is Rasa, and I've spoken to him on Discord as well. Thank you very much, brother. I appreciate your support, homie. And if any of y'all ever want to get a hold of me, my Discord ID and Twitter are in the description. And don't forget to sub to the backup channel. The link is also in the description. And I'm probably going to need it here pretty soon. I mean, I know the way things are going and you know, I'm not going to pretend like uh, this channel is going to be up forever. So be sure to sub to the backup channel. Next video, I'll probably put up a poll or something. Uh, you know, just just let me know if anybody's got ideas, uh, post them down in the comments. Y'all know I read every comment um, outside of that. This went on for a long time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being in the premiere. You know, just thank you for everything. I will talk to you all very, very soon. Thank you for writing with me. And as always, a less a fucking a uh, go.